Hi, I'm Stephanie Kessie from Self Defense Tutorials, friend and training partner Richie Yip. And today, how to go from being in front of your opponent where he can hit you and punch you and do all kinds of terrible things to being behind your opponent where you have the advantage. So we're going to show five methods. No, we are not going to show Bagua where you walk around very, very fast. That'll be the next video. <laughs> That'll be the next video, so stay tuned. Subscribe. Make sure to subscribe for the Combat Bagua video. How are you going to get behind your opponent? Well, one thing you see a fair bit, especially when the guy's drunk, he just hauls off and he throws a giant right hand, and it's almost always a right hand, and probably 70% of the time it's a big right hand. If he throws a giant right hand and I duck, I end up behind him. But we can't plan on this super wild right hand. So if he throws a tighter cross or a hook, if I duck, I then have to pivot. So it's not only just a duck, it's not only just a bob and weave. It's a bob and weave to step to the side, and then a 90 degree pivot. So once again, we're here, and off to the side. Now from here, I've got options. Right now, I've got a very momentary advantage. Yes, I can hit him. I've got a great target here, which I just hit, sorry. <laughs> right behind the jaw. Great place to knock a guy out, great place to dislocate a jaw. I can, depending on how we're set up, I can move into a leg kick, I can move in to a, a clinch position, I can take them down. Point is, if I don't make contact, I've got a beat, I've got a moment to hit him essentially one time before he recovers his position. I can use that one beat to close the distance if I'm a grappler, if I want to run, I duck, I pivot, and sayonara, I'm out of here. So number one, ducking underneath a wild swing. Number two is against the kick. Maybe he throws a big kick here, right? He's done some Taekwondo. If I parry, I get behind him. Once again, I've got a beat. I can kick him right up the middle. I can kick out a leg. I can do a flying elbow. I can close, put my head tight on his back so that he can't elbow me. Go ahead, elbow my face. Okay, stop. I don't stay out here where he can, in fact, elbow me and headbutt me. I get close. So, hearkening back to a video that we shot about being either very, very close to your opponent mm -hmm. or very, very far away, holding to it up in the corner. Third method is against a bum rush. Very common, you'll see somebody come in and they'll be running at the guy. Maybe they're trying to grab the legs, maybe they've watched too much UFC, they think that they're a, they train UFC, and they're trying to do a bad takedown. So go ahead. This is actually an effective takedown against somebody who, or a, an effective takedown defense against somebody who doesn't know anything. Or alternately, we're here, double forearm. Now we're going to be in this position, he's going low. I'm going to take a big side step and then a swing. So it's almost like capoeira. Uh, okay, you sing a dance, or you, you play uh, Okay. As you see, Richie's done a lot of capoeira. It's a big side step and then a pivot. So as Richie comes charging in, big side step and pivot. I'm behind him, it's a matador, right? I'm letting him pass. Once again, close the distance, increase the distance, or hit him. Two more ways to get behind your opponent's street. We shot another video on this, the most important jiu-jitsu move that you need to know for self-defense, arm drag. Anytime he's controlling my wrist, I can arm drag. He's controlling my wrist down here, I can arm drag. If I'm controlling his wrist, I can arm drag. If he's putting his hand on my chest, I can arm drag. I can arm drag from the clinch. Basically, I'm reaching up somewhere between the elbow and the armpit, and I'm pulling him really hard. Check out that video if you want more information. From here, this is often a very good option. Another way to get behind your opponent in the street is from a duck under. It may look like you're putting yourself into somebody's guillotine. I see a spot here underneath his armpit. Maybe he's walking around, as Richie often does, with imaginary lat syndrome. Usually the, the shirt is tighter. Okay. But usually. Yeah. And, and cut off at the mid -rib. <laughs> Tied in the knot yeah. in front. That's only Friday nights. Yeah. Okay, where it's tied in the knot in front. Moving on. Okay. <laughs> Let's get that image out of our head. So we're here. Maybe I'm controlling his wrist, but I see daylight underneath his armpit. I'm going to stick my head through here like I'm giving him the guillotine. And then I look up at the ceiling. So you need a fairly well-developed sense of time here. But it's super powerful. If we're here, he's trying to hit me. There, you see the head goes through, and then it goes up. So essentially, I'm throwing his arm 
this way with the back of my neck. Once again, I'm behind them. A long time ago we did a video on how to take somebody down from that position. Once again, I'll link to it up there. Link to it in the description because that was a good video. Definitely. Yeah. So there you go. Five ways to get from the danger zone. Stand by. Oh, no, no, wait, 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 wait. To behind your opponent where you can do whatever you want to them and take them out. Hope you found that useful. And remember, don't stand in front of your opponent. You can get behind them instead.